Hi guys, today we're going to learn about um, logarithmic differentiation. So in this section, I will derive using log logarithmic differentiation with the help of the chain rule and product rule. Okay, so logarithmic differentiation. So when are you going to use logarithmic differentiation? So that's the question when you're deriving. It's like when there are, when do I use logarithmic differentiation? So basically, when you use it, when you have to use logarithmic, you know you have to use it, use it. You have to use logarithmic because if there is a square root in the problem, or if there's something raising something to the power, or if there's any kind of radical, that's when you use logarithmic differentiation. So an example would be y equals square root of this x minus one times x minus two times x minus three because there is a rep there is a square root or radical involved so let's go over the rules so let's go over the steps in logarithmic differentiation so the first rule is to take the natural log of both sides okay the second rule is to use is to use the properties of logarithmics logarithmic so that's really important step three says that you must differentiate implicitly step four says you then after you differentiate implicitly you solve for y prime or dy dx let's see and then step five says substitute for y and simplify okay and then one more thing you have to know before we actually do some problems. So let's do actually some reviews. So let's do some reviews. So the derivative of a to the x is natural log a times a to the x. We're going to use some of these rules when we actually do the problem. So these rules will come in handy. So I would just write these down. So a u equals natural log of a times a u times du to x rule three says the log the derivative of log a x is one over natural log of a times x rule four is natural log of a times u equals one over natural log a times u times du times dx rule five is simply the power rule right that should be familiar um Rule six is like the power rule, but then you have to times it by du. I think this is like substitution. Yeah. Yeah, rule six is substitution. Rule seven, you should be familiar with. It's called the product rule. And then rule H, you should be in your head on um, the quotient rule. And then rule nine is something we'll have to use when we derive using logarithmic differentiation is chain rule. So the, yeah, we're going to have to, we, when we do the problems, we're going to have to know the product rule and the chain rule. And then these rules will come in handy when, later on when we do the problem. So let's actually do a problem. So yeah, if you like my videos, please like and subscribe to my Mac channel. So let's start with example one. The problem says find y prime. If you're given y equals um, x times square root x squared plus 1. So you know you're going to use logarithmic differentiation because a it has power x squared and then b it has a radical. So you know you're going to use like logarithmic differentiation. So what's my first rule in logarithmic differentiation? This rule step 1 says take ln of both sides. So I'm going to do I'm going to take ln of both sides. So I'm going to take ln of y equals ln of this whole thing. So I'm going to put a bracket x square root you know what um instead of that square root i'll make it a little bit more simpler what's this what is the equivalent what's another way of saying square root you could put that raise it to the one half power right x times x square plus one raise it to the one half power because that's the same thing as square root okay so now we did rule one 
we took ln both sides. Rule two says use properties of logarithm. So the ln y stays the same because yeah. So now we're going to use on the right side we're going to use the properties of properties of logarithm. So let's try to remember. So do you see this x times x squared plus one? That means you're multiplying. So you're really adding. And then remember when you ever have something in the power, you always put that in front of the natural log. So let's, I'll show you what I mean. So this part is going to be ln of x, right? ln of x. Now, since we're multiplying x times x squared plus one to the one half, you're going to have to add because when you're multiplying logs, you're really adding. And then I'm going to put this one half in front of the natural log because whenever you have a square root, you put it in front of the natural log because that's part of the rule. One half ln of x squared x squared plus one, right? Let's see. Did I? Yep, everything's in order. One half. Good. Now that we took the properties of logarithm. The step three says use implicit differentiation on both sides and or take um, the derivative to respect to x. So we're going to have to implicit implicit differentiation or take the derivative in respect to x. So what is the derivative of natural log y? The nat derivative of natural log, anything to the natural log is 1 over whatever inside this um, parenthesis. So ours is going to be y. But we have to de derive it in respect to x, so you're going to put it, you're going to multiply it by dy, dx, or you could say that y prime is the same thing. What is the derivative of natural log x? It's just one over x, and then this one plus this one. We're going to have to use what are we going to do? See this one half? That's a constant, so we could just factor it out. That's a constant. Now. We have to take the derivative of ln times x squared plus 1. So what are we going to do? We're going to use the chain rule, right? The, the simple chain rule. So we're going to use the chain rule. So remember in chain rule, you have to take the derivative of ln. So the derivative of that is 1 over, and then it's whatever inside the parentheses. So it's x squared plus 1. What did I do? You know what? Instead of putting that, I was wrong. I don't think. Let's go back one step. Just, you know, instead of putting, you could put a radical. I don't know if I'm going to get. What I would do is just, yeah, put that radical instead of the raise it to the x squared plus. I think you could get, you'll get the same answer, but I, okay, wait, let me see if we get the same answer. So let's, yeah, let's keep it x squared plus one to the one half. Okay, so let's actually, so this is going to be one half ln x squared plus one. Let's see if I get the right answer. If I get the same answer. Okay. So remember, this one half is a is a constant. So put that constant in front of it. So derivative the derivative of ln. So we're going to use the chain rule for this one. The derivative of ln is one over x squared plus one because it's one over the inside the parentheses, then you have to take the um, derived whatever inside the parentheses, so it's going to be 2x, just 2x. So let's simplify. Okay, so what happens to the 2s? Let's see what happens to the 2s. The 2s cancels, right? So you're just left with plus x over x squared plus 1. And then bring this down one over x. This is going to be one over y dy dx. 
Okay, so before I solve for y, I mean to solve for dy dx by multiplying everything by y, let's let's get let's add these. Let's add these fractions. So when we add fraction, you need a common denominator, right? So what would be my common denominator of that too? The common denominator would be just a combination of x squared plus 1 and then the x. Right? So over here we're missing what? An x. So we got to multiply top by x, top and bottom by x. And over here we're just missing an x squared plus 1. Yeah, it's just simple adding, adding fractions. So 1 times x squared plus 1 is x squared plus 1. And then plus x times x is x squared all over x times x squared plus 1. Now it's time to um, combine my terms. So x squared plus x squared, this is going to be 2x squared plus 1 divided by x times x squared plus 1, 1 over y dy dx, or y prime is the same thing. Um, our goal is to solve for dy dx, so what I have to do is multiply everything right and left to multiply by y, right? So this will give a, yeah, so this will give me dy dx and it's going to be y times 2x squared plus 1 x x squared plus 1. What is our y? Do you remember, if you go back to the original problem, our y is, what is y? This thing, x times x radical x squared plus 1. So let's plug that y into that equation. So y is x times radical x squared plus 1. This is going to be 2x squared plus 1 over x times x squared plus 1. Close that parentheses. Let's see here. What can we do? Do you, do you see anything that cancels? I see I see. do. This x cancels. So you're left with what? Um, Okay, this square root x squared plus 1, let's put everything in power form. So let's rewrite that as x squared plus 1, raise it to the 1 half, times it by 2x squared plus 1, all over. Now, this um, x squared plus 1, how do, how do I rewrite it in power form? x squared plus 1 is the same thing as... Wait, yeah, it's just the same thing as 1. Look here. Um, we have an x squared plus 1, x squared plus 1. They are the same thing, but their powers are the same. I mean, powers are different, but we are dividing. So what do you know about logs when you're dividing? You are really subtracting. So you just subtract the um, powers. So it's going to be 1 half minus 1. What's another way of saying 1? 2 over 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 half. So this is, it's going to be x squared plus 1, raise it to the negative 1 half. And how do I rewrite that in radical form? That's equivalent to saying 1 over x squared plus 1 to the 1 half, or x squared plus 1, and you get radical form. So if you were to simplify this, your final answer should be dy dx equals 2x squared plus 1, because it stays the same, and then our new x squared plus 1 is this thing, 1 over radical 
x squared plus 1. Or you could do x squared plus 1, raise it to the 1 half. It's the same thing. Okay, so we just did a, our first logarithmic differentiation. Let's do example 2. So first, let me find it. Found it. Let's do example 2. So example 2 says find y prime y when y equals x minus 2 square raise it to the radical x square plus 1. So um, what's my first rule in logarithmic? Well, you're doing you're definitely going to do logarithmic differentiation because there's powers and natural log involved. I mean radical involved. So we're going to definitely do logarithmic. So the first thing we got to take the ln of both sides. So let's take ln ln of y and then ln of this this whole thing. So I'm going to put a bracket x minus 1 square over square root x square plus 1. Good. So we got to take the natural log. Now it says step 2 says we got to um, use properties of logarithmics. So this one the left side stays the same. Okay so we're two things. We're dividing so we're gonna we're gonna have to subtract and then for this part do you see this too? You put it in front of the log because that's how you always put powers in front of the natural log, so it's going to be 2 ln of x minus 2. Now, do you see that we're dividing for this part, square root of ra radical x squared plus 1? Um, we're dividing, so we're going to put a um, subtraction. And then this x squared plus 1 radical is equivalent to saying x squared plus 1 raise it to the 1 half power. So you're going to put minus 1 half natural log of x squared plus 1. Good. Now that we found we did step 2, what's step 3? Step 3 says um, use implicit differentiation and take the derivative in respect to x. So natural derivative of natural log in natural log of y is 1 over y and then you have to put a dy dx because we are taking it in respect to x or you could do y prime same thing let's see here do you see we have to take the derivative of this whole thing so this 2 is a constant so put a 2 put a bracket if you want because it's a constant and then what is the derivative of natural log of x minus 2 it's 1 over whatever this is x minus 2 and then you have to take the derivative of whatever inside the parentheses. So the derivative of x minus 2 is just 1. So we could just put a 1 here and then it's minus. Do you see this 1 half? It's constant. So put a 1 half and then you could put a bracket. The derivative of ln x squared plus 1 is 1 over x squared plus 1. And then you have to take the derivative of the in parentheses. So that's going to be 2x. Let's clean this up a little bit. This is going to be 2 over x minus 2 minus, let's see here. What Can you see anything that cancels, right? The 2 cancels, right? So you're left with x over x squared plus 1. And you could still put a parenthesis because remember we have to distribute this negative. Good. One over y. This stays the same. Our, remember, our goal is to solve for um, dy dx, so we're gonna have to multiply everything by y. But before that, let's subtract these fractions. So we, need, if we need, if we can, to subtract it, we need a common denominator, right? So, what would be my common denominator? It's just these x minus 2 and x squared plus 1. So it's x minus 2 times x squared plus 1, right? So we need comp so what over here, what are we missing? We are missing an x minus 2. So multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. 
over here, what are we missing? We're missing an x squared plus 1. So multiply x squared plus 1 on both sides. So let's clean it up. So foil this out. So this is going to be 2x squared plus 2. And then over here, if we foil this out, you're going to get you're going to get an x squared and then a minus 2x. But remember, we have to distribute this negative. So to foil, distribute that negative, you're going to get negative x squared and then two negatives is positive so this is 2x all over x minus 2 and then x squared plus 1 good so now let's clean it up a little bit over here we have a 2x squared and a minus x squared so let me box it what's that that's going to be 2x squared minus x squared is just regular x squared 2 minus 1 is x squared, yeah. And the next one, our next degree is 2x, so we're going to put a 2x here. And then our next one is just regular 2. This is going to be x minus 2, x squared plus 1. This is 1 over dy dx. Okay, now we want to solve for y, so what I'm going to do is multiply every, solve for dy dx, so what I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom, both sides by y, so this cancel, the y's cancel, so you're left with dy dx equals y, and then it's multiplying this whole thing, so it's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 2 over x minus 2 x squared plus 1. So what was it? Go back to your original problem. What is our y? Our y is, remember, it was this whole... What was y? This whole thing. So plug in y into that equation. So y is going to be x minus 2 square over radical x square plus 1. And it's times this whole thing. Let's see here. Let's put everything in power form. It'll make it a lot more easier. So this is power form. This stays the same. This x squared plus 1 in power form would be x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. And then this stays the same, x minus 2, x squared plus 1. And then multiply this out, it's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 2. Oops. Good. Now, let's combine like terms. So, do you see this x minus 2, x minus 2? Let's combine it. So, this has a one degree of 1. So, what happens when you're dividing, you're really subtracting? So 2 minus 1 is just 1. So wait. So this cancels, so you're left with 1. Um, over here we are we're left with x squared plus 1 and x squared plus 1 to raise it to the 1 half. Since we they are multiplying it, you just have to add the powers. So this has a 1. So what's 1 half plus 1 or 2 over 2? That's three halves. So your final answer should look something like this. It should be x minus 2 times it by x squared plus 2x 
plus 2 over x squared plus 1. Would, we said it was raised it to the 3 half, so how would we could just leave it as x squared plus 1, raise it to the 3 halves. And I think, yeah, that's it. Your, that is your final answer. So dy dx is this. So let's do this one. Um, same. This is example three. So let's let me find it. I found it. So we're gonna use find the question says find y prime. We have y equals x square square radical three x three x minus two over x minus two square. We're gonna use logarithmic because um there's radicals involved and powers involved. So what's my first step in log? Um, take ln of both sides. So it's gonna be ln of y equals ln of this whole thing x square 3x minus 2 over x minus 1 square and close the bracket so okay so let's simple now we're going to use properties of logs so this stays the same ln of y now, see x squared, see how, how they're really close, so you're multiplying it, so that means you're going to have to add, and then over here you're going to divide, so you're really subtracting in log rules. So let's do the ln of x squared. Um, you know what, before I, I'll do it little by little because I don't want, I don't, let's, yeah, let's do it little by little because, so this is going to be ln x squared plus because we're going to multiply it, so it's going to be ln of the x. You know what? Let, that square root, let's rewrite it as uh, let's rewrite it as 3x minus 2, raise it to the 1 half power, minus ln of x minus 1 square. Now let's simplify it even more. So what do you know about powers? You put it in front of the natural log, so it's going to be 2n ln of x plus, do you see this 1 half? So you put it in front of the natural log, 1 half ln of 3x minus 2 minus, put this 2 in front of natural log, 2 ln x minus 1. Good. Step three says we got to um, differentiate implicitly with respect to x. So derivative ln y is one over y, and then respect to x. So it's going to be put a dy dx or y prime. The derivative of ln of x, and then you have a two in front, is one over two. I mean one. One over x times it by two. Plus. Now the derivative of ln of this is, this one half is a constant, so put a one half and then put a bracket. So the derivative of ln of 3x minus 2 is 1 over 3x minus 2 times it by whatever the rat inside the um, parentheses. So three derivative of 3x minus 2 is just 3 minus 2, because that 2 is a constant. Derivative of ln x minus 1 is 1 over x minus 1 times it by just 1. So just leave it alone with that. Let's simplify. This is going to be 2 over x. Over here, this is going to be plus 3 over... Now, foil. i have just foiled this 2 out to make it more... So this is going to be... 2 times 3x is 6x minus 4. This is going to be minus 2 over x minus 1.
Okay, so now what? We are adding and subtracting, so what do you need? You need a common denominator, right? So the common denominator is just this whole three. So it's going to be x, 6x minus 4, and then x minus 1. So over here, what are we missing? We are missing an x and an x minus 1. Whoops, no, we're not. What we, we were missing an x and a 6x minus 4. Over here, we are missing an x minus an x and an x minus 1. Over here, what are we missing? We are missing an 6x minus 4 and then x minus 1. Okay, so when you actually do the work, what are we going to get? Um, I'm just going to put it when you actually, so listen, when I simplify, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get 12x squared minus 12x minus 20x plus 8 plus 3x squared minus 12x squared plus 8x all over x 6x minus 4 and then x minus 1 good Now, it's all about combining like terms and canceling. Let's see if anything cancels. Oh yes, things do cancel. So this 12x cancels. So over here, you're left with, when you combine like terms, you're gonna get three x cubed minus 15 x squared plus 8x radical 3x minus 2 over six x minus four and then x minus 1 to the cubed. But we're not done, right? dy dx. We got to uh, multiply to get dy by x, so we're going to multiply everything by y. So you, your final should be something like this, dy dx. And then y, what is our y? It's this x squared. 3x minus 2 over x minus 1 square let's see 3x cubed minus 15x square plus 8x radical 3x minus 2 X minus one three you could just leave it like this or you could go one step further and simplify it but I'm not <laughs> so you can yeah you can leave it like this or simplify it
So that was three. Yeah, I try, I'm trying to make this video like 40 minutes or less. Let's do example four. Um, this is going to take long. Um, I'm going to put, I'm just going to break this in two parts. So follow the second part 